Uh, we are back on New Hampshire today. If you're just joining us, Charlie Erlinghouse from the Josiah Bartlett team on partisan free market think tank because he thinks a lot. He knows his stuff and he's joining us. And if you're just joining us, you should know that your New Hampshire House of Representatives passed today by one vote a bill called the so called Transgender Rights Bill. And it's, it's, I didn't want to go into explaining it, but they spent three or four hours on that because that was more important to them than what you're driving around thinking about right now. And that if you're like a lot of people, you're thinking about bills that are piling up at home or income and things like that. Not so much what gender do you feel like today and can you go in the opposite gender bathroom. That's, that's just, I don't get it. I, I respect people put their name on a ballot. It's thankless. It's a lot of work. I mean that sincerely, so I respect the uh, representatives. But to the 181 people who voted for this, or no, actually, no, that was the last vote. Uh, the 188 people that voted for this today. Um, well, I guess, I guess uh, I'm, uh, I'm envious that you're so self-important that you can decide what social issues are going to keep you up at night versus pocketbook and wallet issues. But that's all I'm going to say this segment, because Charlie Arlinghouse, the rest of the time is yours. Walk us through this $11 billion two-year budget that they're finally getting to at 420 in the afternoon. Yeah, well, they have to pass it by tomorrow. The, the way the rules work, you have to call something called crossover. You have to pass it out of the House, get it to the Senate. And, and the, what's happened is it's a mess and nobody likes it. And the people who are, uh, people who are supporting it, the, the, the sponsors said, I know it's terrible, I know it's awful, but let's pass it and maybe the Senate will make it better. And, and this is a change, I think, because for, for decades what happens is the governor presents a budget that he thinks is a good budget. The House then goes to work and they do a budget, and when they're done and they pass it over, they think that if the Senate just said, yeah, that's good, that it would be fine. And this year, what they're telling us is that if the Senate said, yeah, that's good, it would be a disaster. So they're uh, waiting and letting the Senate do the heavy lifting. There are a lot of problems with the budget. One is it spends a lot more money than, than it should. I mean, we're in, we're in one of the most difficult budget times in, in probably our political lifetimes. Um, and I think that uh, this budget spends, you know, about one, one and a half billion more than the last budget. Now, a lot of that is federal money that's coming in. But we're being told that the federal money is replacing state money. No, it isn't because the toll is going up a lot. What are the notorious, what are the notorious new taxes in this two-year budget? Well, that's if the, it passes. Well, that's the problem because at, at, uh, on some level, budgets are about what they do to the economy or don't do to the economy. And this budget includes... We had lowered the insurance tax uh, a couple of years ago, actually John Lynch's first term, lowered the insurance tax to try to attract insurance jobs to New Hampshire. They've suspended that. It, it was phased in and they've suspended the phase in because I guess we don't need insurance jobs now. That's okay. one thing they've done. The, the biggest problem they have is they, they've instituted, they're raising their own meals tax, so we increased taxes on tourism during a depression. Um, they're raising the cigarette tax for the fourth time in five years. Yeah, and just annihilate that group. Yeah, I mean, it's poor people. The fun part of that is that on cigars, they're raising taxes on cheap cigars, but not on expensive cigars. So I can get an Ashton and it's okay. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> taxes don't go up on that. So Do you hear that, Gita? Okay. Uh, a friend of mine said, so at the country club, the dishwasher has to pay taxes on his cigars, but the guy in the poker room mm -hmm. doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, the big one, though, is capital gains tax. We don't have a capital gains tax. We don't tax capital gains. That is a huge incentive right. for people to locate here. Maybe that's, maybe that's why New Hampshire's here. faring better in a downtime, by the way, things like that in the past. Th this is exactly why people come here. You know, businesses can locate anywhere they want these days. It, 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 uh, there's no captive market. So we're going to tax them, which is like putting up a sign at the border saying, yeah. remember how we used to be business friendly? Not so much anymore. We don't need your jobs. Well, this is now, the dumbest thing in the budget. And also the, the, the estate. We have a new death tax. We had actually gotten rid of it um, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I want to say eight years ago and uh, when Gene Shaheen was governor. And now we're bringing it back. And, you know, that when what they say is, well, you're just taxing, you know, people's windfall. But um, the, I want to leave my business to my, uh, my son. I can't. Is the spending been cut as much as it could be? The spending's not really been cut. I mean, the spending is increasing, total spending increasing by 11%. The in this economy? In this economy. Um, Say that again, please. Total spending is being increased by about 11%. You can play games with uh, federal money there? and non-federal money, but spending is going up. Is anyone out there listening in our audience, which we appreciate, it's growing, it's, it's great. Has anyone out there, has your income gone up 11% in the last few months as you read all this economic doom and gloom? 
I'm just curious. Well, mine has one. I'll tell you. Eight six six eight two three one zero seven seven. So they're they're increasing spending eleven percent. I mean, it, what what's interesting is if you look around the country and around the state, people are talking about uh, about layoffs and furloughs, and you know, we, we talked during the break about about companies that we know of where employees are taking um, forced to take two week right. paid furloughs. Um, the university system is talking about laying off people, talking about paid furloughs for non You were just talking about a newspaper earlier. I mean, it's yeah. all across the board. Across the board. Everyone we know, every household I know is it's thinking. making tough decisions. Well, what do we do? How about if we don't? Well, we can't do that this year. Do, do you believe? Not the state. Though. Charlie, you cover this closer than me. And I, I want to ask you two questions, and one's kind of 10,000 feet. So please excuse me. But I, 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 is this state changed that much? With I, kind of that common sense frugal New Hampshire nature of why we're the envy of every other state in the country? Does it change that much that these people don't give a darn in the law and the legislature? They don't really care that we're, why, we, why we've been doing better? Do they, they just want to toss that out? But they, do they think it's our diet? Do they think it's our mountains and our lakes that's going to make us different than these other states and always fare better? Do they realize that they're going to put us right into every other bucket with all these other states with the problems if they raise these taxes and raise the spending? Do they, do they, do they care? You know what? I, or do they care about transgender neutrality or I don't know what's going on because the state has not changed dramatically in the last 20 years. The state was never as conservative as some people think we were and as, and is not as liberal as some people think we are now. Um, but the state has always had this sort of what we call Yankee frugality among people who are Yankees. But it is this notion, the pay-as-you-go notion, that right. we don't have a lot of debt, we don't have a lot of, you know, we, yeah. we don't do a lot of things that other states do. We don't do bells and whistles, we do the basics. Uh, Andrew, and Andrew, that's changing. You know, it's got to be, I mean, they got to be start to worry about jobs, because what, what happens is, I don't want more people on welfare, I don't want more people on anything, I want more people working. And, and everybody I know wants to be working, or working more jobs, or, mm -hmm. or working harder, and people want to do that. And you've got to be very careful in an economy like this, um, with doing with doing anything that's going to hurt jobs, and it, the simple story is raising taxes in a recession just, is just, a dumb, just, dumb, yeah. dumb idea. Just don't even think beyond it. Just listen to Charlie. Just that's what it. he said. Just keep it at that, and don't even play with it. Just it's just it's just bad, bad policy. It's just like it's like it's like hurting your own health. Just don't even think about. It. Thank you, Andrew, uh, Bob, and Conker. Go ahead. You're on New Hampshire today. Hey, 